Hello. What I'm going to show you today is how to plant a kiwi and we'll talk a little bit about kiwi plants. Now you never used to be able to grow kiwi plants in the UK. They were always something that you would only be able to grow in warmer climates but things have changed, plants have uh, come forward quite a lot and now kiwis is a, some, something that we can now grow in the UK which is so exciting but there are lots of different varieties out there for you to choose. Now choose carefully because some are self-fertile which means that you only need one of one plant and it will produce fruit with just one plant and some of them aren't self-fertile and they need a buddy. Some of them are female some of them are male. <laughs> so make sure that when you go, you check the label very, very carefully. Usually when you get a male variety, it will need a lady to make babies. But I have actually found a self, oops, a self-fertile kiwi. Now I have grown this kiwi before. I had one of these in Epsom, but I didn't give it enough space and it grew okay, but then it got overtaken by some other plants. And I tried to move it and it wasn't particularly happy. So um, it didn't survive. But this one I have got and I'm giving it loads of room to grow. So hopefully, it should be very, very happy here. Now this variety is called Isai, I-S-S-A-I. Now the reason I chose this one is because it's self-fertile, so it will produce fruit without needing another plant. And it's a fairly sort of compact plant. It doesn't have to stretch out a huge amount. And also, the thing that intrigued me most of all with regards to this is that the kiwis are not the large ones that you get in the shops. They're the tiny little ones. They're like the size of a large olive. And they're fuzz free. And you can just peek, pick them off and eat them straight away. Because, oh my God, if you had to peel something that tiny out of its skin, it would just... I don't think I've got that patience. And this will settle and once it's settled, it will produce hundreds and hundreds of these little baby kiwi fruits. So that's what I'm really looking forward to. It does get quite large. I know I said it's compact, but the, the plant itself is fairly, ooh, is, is compact, but it does get quite big. It gets to about, it can get to about 12 feet so it doesn't have to, you don't have to let it get that size. If you want to keep it a little bit smaller, which I most probably will, then uh, just keep it pruned to the size that is suitable for you. It does need, like all kiwis, they do need support because the fruits will get very, very heavy. So I'm planting it at the very back of one of my small beds and as you can see there's a fence at the back of that so I'm going to put some trellis up there so that it's got a support that it can climb up and I can make the trellis a little bit higher than the fence itself and then it's got loads of space to to spread across so they do prefer full sun and they, they prefer slightly acidic soil. So if you've got very alkaline soil, maybe add a little bit of lime in there just to shift it back the other way, okay? Um, but put your kiwi in. If it doesn't seem like it's doing particularly well, then add a little bit of uh, ericaceous soil compost and then that will help boost it, which I think is what I'll most probably do. So, also another thing before you decide where you're going to put that, they don't like to be in a waterlogged soil because the roots won't be very happy. So 
planting it in a raised bed is actually really good because it shifts up the water table. So let me show you how I'm going to plant my kiwi. Right, so before I plant my kiwi, just make sure that the area that you're going to plant it, you've just turned the soil over so that you've loosened it up a bit. Also, make sure that you remove any weeds from the area. Now, dig a lovely big hole, nice and deep. My kiwi ooh, is in quite a, a tall pot. So I'm going to have to make sure that I dig a lovely deep hole. Now you want to put your kiwi plant in the soil roughly about the same depth that it is in the pot. So make sure that you've got enough soil dug out of the hole. If you're unsure if your hole is big enough, get your pot, put it in the hole and see if it's deep enough. If it's not, then just remove a little bit more. I'm just going to scrape the last little bit out with my hand, just like that. Now, because this plant prefers acidic soil and I'm not sure what soil is in there. What I'm going to do is I am going to stick in the hole some ericaceous compost. Now ericaceous compost is perfect for any plant that likes slightly acidic, acidic soil. So sticking a little bit in the hole, I must have stuck about four or five good handfuls, big handfuls in there and so that will just help the plant. If you want to add a little bit more, then you can. Now, I will add a little bit more in a bit as I'm filling in the hole. Now, you need to take the plant out of the pot, obviously, and I just want to show you, oh, this is gonna be interesting, isn't it? Oh, the roots. Now the roots on this are amazing. Can you see this one down here? Look at that. It's enormous. Which is fab. There's loads of them all over the place. So this plant is doing really, really well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop it in the hole. Ooh, and try and kneel back down. Okay, so pop it in the hole. If you find that the soil in the pot is really, really tight, then just give it a slight loosen like this, and that will encourage all the roots to go out. So I'm going to pop it in like that. And what I am going to do before I fill the hole in is I'm going to stick a little bit more ericaceous compost. You can pick ericaceous compost up. You should be able to pick it up from any good garden centre. So I've put a load more in there and then all I'm going to do is to fill in the hole with the compost or with the with the soil that I took out give it a good firm push down I'm going to leave the label on then at least I know what variety it is just in case I get another one and it's always nice because then people come around and they go, oh, what variety is that? And you can go, oh, that's a disease. And you sound frightfully, frightfully posh. So give it a good firm in, level off the soil, and that's my kiwi in. Right, so there it is. It's in the, oh, you can't see it. I'm, look, I'm in the way. There it is. There it is. In the, in the soil already. Now all I need to do now is give it a good water. Now this time of year, January is a good time to get them in because then they will get settled throughout the winter and into the early part of the spring. And when they have to put on a load of growth, when they want to flower and fruit, then they're nice and settled in their new home. So this 
if you plant them now, either at the very end of the year or at the very beginning of the year, then they've got a nice time to settle into their new home before they have to put on all that energy and start to flower and fruit. So hopefully this year I should get the first kiwis. I'm going to put a structure up. There are a few little sticks in here, which I will leave in here just until I've got the structure in. And then hopefully I can then encourage the stems of the kiwi to then go up and start to grip onto the structure. And then hopefully they'll, uh, they'll sort themselves out and they'll be quite happy. I might just have to go around and just encourage a few of them in to where they're supposed to be. So I will keep you updated on their progress. They don't take a huge amount to look after. Just prune them at the end of the year. And, and if I do come across any other problems, then I will go through those with you and uh, I will show you and hopefully we can work through it together. So whether you've sown kiwis before or whether you are new to them, they are a very exotic fruit to grow and it's really nice now that we can actually grow them outside in the UK. It's not something that we have to do in a hot climate. So look at the label carefully, make sure that you can see whether it's male or female and whether it needs another one to help produce fruit because some of them do some of them don't some of the females need another female to produce fruit and some of the males need a female so just double check if it doesn't say on the label then always ask okay well i hope you found what i've shown you interesting and i look forward to seeing you